Red's loss was first proposed to the UNFCCC by Papua New Guinea and by groups in Brazil, with a view to providing international financial incentives to help countries reduce their deforestation rates. Many people saw it mainly as a means to save the threatened great rainforests of the planet. Tropical dry forests are very different from rainforests. They are characterized by being green in the rainy season and losing most of their leaves in the dry season, which may be from five to seven months long. Although definitions vary, they are usually considered to make up about 45% of world's tropical forest. They are widely distributed over Mexico. The seasonally deciduous low woodlands of the Ayuquila Basin in western Mexico, which fall within one of Mexico's Red Plus early action areas, are a typical example. In an intact state, tropical dry forests can carry above-ground carbon stocks of up to 60 to 80 tons per hectare, which is much lower than the 150 tons per hectare that can be found in many rainforests. It may therefore seem to be more worthwhile for Red Plus to focus on rainforests, but there are several reasons why countries should include tropical dry forests as a priority in the Red Plus programs. Firstly, they tend to house most of their carbon stocks in the soils. If soil carbon is included, their relative importance as carbon reservoirs becomes clearer and conversion to permanent agriculture results in the loss not only of the carbon in the trees, but also much of what was in the soil. Secondly, in many countries including Mexico, tropical dry forests have historically been lost at a faster rate than rainforests, mostly to permanent pasture and commercial agriculture, whether on a large or a small scale. Thirdly, most of the area that remains is highly degraded, because unlike the dense rainforests, tropical dry forests have relatively high human population densities. As a result, they are almost all in use for local livelihoods, for shifting cultivation to graze cattle, and as a source of wood fuel and poles. Although there are usually very few trees left of size that would make them useful as timber. These uses indicate the universal social importance of tropical dry forests. Last, but by no means least, they are home to an amazing variety of plants and animals, with many rare species and a high level of endemism, as well as the capacity to supply a range of ecosystem and cultural services. In western Mexico, the returns to farmers if they convert tropical dry forests to agave plantations for tequila or to permanent pasture for cattle are far higher than any likely future value of carbon. And in reality, it may be difficult, if not impossible, to design effective Red Plus incentives to halt this. Moreover, although it is possible to identify general areas that are at risk of deforestation, it is very difficult to identify exactly which individual landowners or which specific communities are about to deforest in order to target Red Plus incentives or programs to them. However, preliminary analysis of data from the Mexican National Forest Inventory indicates that across the country as a whole, gross annual carbon emissions due to degradation in the remaining tropical dry forests are very high and may even be higher than those from deforestation. The, the message that degradation needs more attention I think is a, is a really strong one. It's one that needs to be communicated to policymakers lest they continue down the road of focus solely on, on deforestation. I think the the carbon benefits and the social welfare benefits of dealing with degradation are, are, have both been amply demonstrated. Moreover, the fact that the forests are degraded now means that there could be many opportunities for restoration and enhancement of stocks, preferably in ways that could also benefit the local population and targeting 
is much simpler because degraded areas can easily be identified. For a program like RED, or RED Plus, I think it's really critical to pay attention to tropical dry forest ecosystems and the kinds of activities that uh, programs such as RED could engage in, the effort that I think we need to engage in, which is the uh, restoration, the recovery of tropical dry forest ecosystems. But we still have areas that uh, can be recovered given time and perhaps given some uh, management applied to them. But to design effective ways to reduce degradation and stimulate forest enhancement or restoration, it is necessary to have a good understanding of the human uses of tropical dry forests. These have produced mosaic landscapes within which complex carbon dynamics are occurring. Several processes have combined to create these landscapes and in any one plot of land, stocks may be increasing or decreasing in a cyclical way, owing to the manner in which the land is used for shifting cultivation and grazing. Clearly, the aim should be to stimulate the processes which result in increases, while at the same time discouraging those that result in decreases. Shifting cultivation, sometimes called slash and burn, is commonly blamed for degradation in these forests, and shortened fallow cycles are often said to contribute to this. In the Ayuquila area, for example, the traditional shifting cultivation system for maize consists of two years of cultivation followed by at least eight years of fallow, during which rapid growth of coppicing secondary vegetation occurs. But over the last decade, the cycle has been reduced to a total of around six years. In this area, studies show that although areas have been subject to shifting cultivation in the past have lower average above-ground carbon stocks than nearby old-growth forests, their soil carbon stocks are much higher. And the soil carbon is not lost in succeeding cycles, in contrast to permanent agriculture. Moreover, Shortened cycles in the Ayukila area have in fact resulted in increases in above-ground carbon stocks over the areas involved, not in decreases. This is because the change in cycle is not driven by population pressure and the need to bring more land under cultivation, but has been a response to various government policies. For example, programs which give subsidies for inputs such as fertilizers and to the fact that cutting younger fallows needs much less labor than cutting more mature ones. The shortened cycle means that more land is completely abandoned and becomes covered by quite rapidly growing secondary forest. Grazing is a much bigger threat as regards degradation in these woodlands. The cattle population is increasing, driven by the steadily rising price of beef compared to maize, which is a result of global economic forces. Also, families in which men have migrated for better paid employment to cities or to the USA tend to invest in cattle, since cows require less labor than cultivation and are more profitable. Maize is increasingly grown for cattle fodder rather than for humans. People more often buy their food these days, even their tortillas, in spite of the cultural importance of homemade tortillas made from home-grown corn. In many villages, the cattle are allowed to graze freely in the forest both in the fallows undergoing secondary regrowth and in old-growth forests, which has never been used for cultivation.
potrero o están sí, sueltos? Sí, acá en el cerro. Ah, en sí, el cerro. Sí, ah. En la parte que tienes que eh, En la parte, sí, allá están en el cerro, sí. ¿Ahí se pasan la misma temporada de seca que de lluvia? No. A, allá ah. es en tiempo de agua, ¿sabes cuenta que, que se pasan cuatro o cinco meses y los bajamos a, a donde hay pastizales o donde sembramos? Mm. Ajá. Bestias y vacas. Las vacas con las Unas seis. Todo el año están sueltos. Sí. La misma temporada de lluvia que sí, sí. De seca. Sí. ¿Y suelto, ¿Es suelto en parcelas o suelto sí. en el uso como en el cerro? En el cerro. Tengo como unas ocho más allí. En, la, en, la, en otra temporada, en la de lluvia, por ejemplo, no lo suelto. Sí, los tengo sueltos. ¿sí? Y en las secas, tengo otro potrero de cerro que es de objeto para allá. But where the ratio of cattle to forest area is high, this greatly depresses not only the above ground biomass levels, but also the natural regeneration rate, as well as the structure and species composition of the forest. Moreover, there has been an increased demand for fence poles to keep the cattle off the cultivation areas during the growing season. These posts are culled from the coppicing trees in fallowed areas, increasing the loss of living carbon stocks. <laughs> Containment for environmental services has been used widely in Mexico in the past for forest conservation and is popular with the communities that have received these funds. It may be part of the solution, but may not always be the most appropriate policy response since it could simply result in cattle being switched to other forest areas. It would be wiser to look for Red Plus solutions outside the forest sector, and Mexico's Red Plus strategy is promoting a much wider rural development approach, which would encompass this. In my opinion, RED uh, is one of the main strategies for reducing uh, deforestation and mainly degradation and all that of forest. Uh, I think that uh, RED strategies should be more um, targeted to actions uh, that could reduce the driving forces on deforestation and degradation. And that means that those actions should be more related to agriculture, uh, grazing, cattle raising, and other activities not directly related, related to forest activities. Intensification of cattle rearing systems may be one way to tackle this driver of carbon emissions at root, without penalizing the local economy. The conversion of limited parts of the forest to high-quality pasture, the cultivation of fodder banks, and the import of high-energy feedstock from non-forest areas would be considered as part of this strategy. Such strategies are, however, not without social risk. They imply higher inputs of capital into production meaning that the richer farmers within the community are more likely to be able to take part and possibly even expand at the cost of the poorer farmers, even if the program is supported by government subsidies. Concern for equity and fair benefit sharing under Red Plus has led to calls for safeguards. And these safeguards need to be carefully monitored at the local level as Red Plus pilot projects get started. Helping communities to do this should be an essential part of any Red Plus program. In addition, however, monitoring of the carbon impacts of different Red Plus activities will be important to understand which strategies are effective in preserving and enhancing stocks for the purposes of Red Plus. It is very difficult to monitor degradation using remote sensing, but community monitoring may be particularly effective in this respect not least because it can provide local information into the causes of drivers of degradation. It seems to me that the local communities present in these areas uh, should be involved in the monitoring uh, that is necessary for RED to do the program, for RED to develop the programs. Have a tremendous local knowledge of the systems. 
in some cases the knowledge is quite sophisticated, there is a question of traditional ecological knowledge that in some cases is very profound in the case of these communities. The capacity of building, the training of the local communities in the specific activities that have to be read, the monitoring of um, tree growth, the monitoring of um, the distribution of trees and um, plants in the, in the physical space in the landscapes and so on, I think a particular aspect that would be relevant would be uh, to engage uh, RED in a very uh, well-structured, well-defined program of capacity building. Technologies such as smartphones for recording data in the field and drones, which could be flown by communities themselves, are possible means by which communities can be supported and help to monitor their carbon stocks. As observed in the tropical dry forests of western Mexico. One, tackling degradation and promoting forest enhancement in tropical dry forests may be a more effective Red Plus strategy than focusing on deforestation and could result in greater reduction in CO2 emissions, probably at lower cost. Two, the main drivers of degradation are related to cattle rearing, not to shifting cultivation. Three, interventions in cattle rearing are likely to increase already existing social inequalities and need to be handled with care. Four, community monitoring of the impacts of Red Plus interventions is essential, both to ensure that safeguards are being complied with and to provide data on the effectiveness of specific Red Plus interventions in reducing emissions.